it's my honour and privilege to call on the Honourable Opetor William Seal to make his valedictory statement. Mana Fakawa and a mana a iwi and a reo and a hawefa and a karangaranga maha tena koto tena koto tena koto katoa o te manatua sa le vau sa for sun o sa vasa vasa o a leo a tau faisunu ia o le langi. Ole wa le lingon fangatia wa paul tu am fomalu wa wa pa i al fanta fa al mau te fono fai tu la fono wa o o au te ronei pa i te malang i a wale a inga salvi wa fang pot poto pa i foi tamal malo wa ta po inga u pu fai malo i a te roa sa moa mal paspika loa loa pa i te malo u le le nei wa maori e fa sino e fanu a malele. O alfaleli o tainui maoli a wa kingi tu heitia pota tau te fero fero tu afitu. Me se wo me wo ma sani malo fenga lo ngal malo tulo 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 na ia. Kirana ta tau ka tau toa. Wakalo vla ia tu kia matolosi. Malo nei talo hanei. Talo fatu valu. Malo la mali e malo au pito ka inga tonga Nisa pula vinaka Noia, Maori And warm Pacific greetings to one and all I have conveyed my utmost respects to the man of the land of Aotearoa Mr Speaker The sea, this house And its people for this is my home I have conveyed my highest respects to the mana Of the many people, government leaders, diplomatic corps MPs local government, NGOs, churches, our chiefs and traditional leaders, friends and public servants present tonight, including my family and those who have traveled from overseas to be here, and those who are listening from across the oceans, you are my community. I've also expressed my deep respects to Māori, the people of the land, and the Kingitanga, for you are my kin. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my heart is filled with gratitude and it is my absolute pleasure to stand here tonight, see me naked of course, <laughs> to present my final remarks in Parliament. In the last seven months I've been saying farewell to the Pacific communities of Aotearoa, New Zealand. This was my tour of duty <laughs> with my community where we've cried, we've danced, we've eaten pork, <laughs> we've drank cover on many occasions. I got lifted up once and got carried by the elders of the Cook Islands community, while others chanted all the time I was fearful I would cause injury to someone. They were elderly. <laughs> and then feeling glad I was no longer the minister responsible for Pacific Health. <laughs> I want to pay tribute to all the Pacific mamas <laughs> who have continued to feed me as they farewelled me. They are the ones that get things done all the time. Prime Minister, you need the mummers on your side if you want to win this election. I see them in the public sector, in health and education and employment, even in this house. They do a lot of work for our communities. In fact, during election year, most of my colleagues would lose weight as they got so busy campaigning they didn't eat. I didn't have that problem. I put on weight. Because everywhere I went, all the Pacific Mamas would feed me wherever I go. And they wouldn't let me go until I'd eaten something. And then they put food in my car. I received so many reflections from the Pacific community about my time here as the MP for Mangere and as the Minister for Pacific Peoples. Perhaps what remains to be said is for me to express my absolute gratitude to everyone here tonight. There are so many people who have made sacrifices of their time given me counsel, your personal resources, and have supported me throughout. Whilst there are so many to name, I do express my gratitude to Vui Mark Goshi, Lua Manwao Dame Winnie Laban, Fa Moetau Lua Jerome Mika, Paul Ritamanu, 
the Mangri Labour Party. Are you in the house? <laughs> yeah, I did give away my. <laughs> I want to acknowledge also those of our Mangri Labour Party who are no longer with us, who passed away. And the many volunteers, to each of you, I say, Faftai, Faftai, Faftai to Lava, thank you so much. Pacific People's representation in Parliament only started in 1993 with Taito and I. After them came Bui, then Lua Manbao and Charles Chavao. I came along as the fifth Labour MP of Pacific Heritage. First time one born, and as the late aunties Philly Few and Lizzie Law of the Service Workers Union would say, I also was the youngest and most handsomest of the lot. <laughs> as I reflect on the maiden speech I gave on the 1st of April 2008, the issues I raised then are just as relevant today as they were in 2008. The work must continue. And I wish all the best to those who will take it up, especially members of the Labour Party Pacific Caucus and the next government. Tonight I want to focus on the future of Pacific peoples of Aotearoa, attempt to lift the spirits, hopes and dreams of our Pacific youth and offer a few challenges to those who wish to lead New Zealand in the future. In 2018, Grant Robertson, as Minister of Finance myself, launched a new Treasury report called New Zealand's Pacific Economy Report. It is the first report of its kind where it showed that for a small population, Pacific peoples contributed $8 billion to New Zealand's economy, despite the inequities and barriers they face. We knew then, as a government, Pacific peoples needed a long-term vision in order to remove barriers and address the inequities they face. To make an impactful difference required a significant investment across a number of government agencies. It required everyone working hard and moving at pace to establish foundations of well-being that would endure. And that's what we did. We worked hard and at pace to deliver Pacific well-being strategy across a number of government agencies with investments and outcome measurements. We delivered for Pacific languages, housing, health, education, STEAM pathways, Tupu Aotearoa employment opportunities and business. Even my uncle thanked me for an increase in the minimum wage when it reached $21, and then he asked whether he can get another one next year. <laughs> this is the work that must continue. Thank you to all the staff of MPP for all your hard work and support for our community, Pacific communities, and your support of me during my time as minister. You were always my favorite ministry because <laughs> because the challenges you faced were always insurmountable. Yet when we as a country ensure that Pacific peoples of Aotearoa are strong, resilient, thriving and prosperous, we are also ensuring that New Zealand as a whole benefits. For Pacific people are the youngest and fastest growing population. We have to prepare the next generation to succeed so that Aotearoa New Zealand succeeds. They are the future workforce, future business owners, taxpayers, required to produce for the rapid ageing population. We also launched in 2018 four Lalanga Four Goals of economic prosperity, thriving languages and culture, healthy and wealthy families, and a focus on Pacific youth to live confident, thriving, resilient, prosperous lives. I set out our future direction then for our government and Pacific peoples of Aotearoa based on the age-old saying, o lea sumal filinga, o lea sumal mata a saying rooted in the voyaging practices of Samoa, where each leg of the journey is marked by arrival. We check our canoes to see if all is well, then prepare for the next leg of the journey. And whilst others end up staying to establish new sediments, the voyage will continue to find new horizons. In other words, moving forward is our ilima law to pursue better opportunities for the next generation, and that's the challenge to future governments. To the Ministry of Health Pacific team and health officials, including the Pacific health providers and church and community leaders, I will always credit you for your tireless efforts to keep our community safe and protected during the COVID pandemic. Thank you also to the Pacific diplomats for your role in giving confidence to our people throughout the challenging period, especially my colleagues uh, the Consul General of the Cook Islands in Samoa and Auckland. To Jacinda Ardern, thank you for the opportunity to be a member of your government for supporting my council. I will never forget how I attempted to control my emotions 
when I was first asked to travel with the Pacific Island Forums to represent you in Rome two weeks after I was sworn in as a minister. Then when you asked in 2019 that you and Winston Peters would, would like me to accompany you to the United Nations General Assembly, I simply said, yes, Prime Minister. But I could have jumped out of that vehicle we were in. I was so excited. <laughs> I remember the swell of emotion also when you agreed we will deliver the Dawn Raids apology and I couldn't go to sleep thinking through every detail of what needed to happen and I cried. Then it seemed like I couldn't stop crying. I was even more emotional when you agreed to participate in the Ifonga despite your reservations for Aftaiti Lalava. However, Pacific immigration settings is work that remains to be completed. To Grant Robertson, the Minister of Finance, thank you very much to you and your Treasury officials for your amazing willingness to listen, understand and support the Pacific birds. It's not always easy when you've also got Minister Willie Jackson and Minister Winston Peters breathing down your neck for their slice of the budget pie. You, above all, I wish to pay tribute to because you kept your word with me and turned up to front our Pacific communities every year. To all of my former ministerial colleagues and Labour Party caucus, including the fighting fit Pacific and Māori caucus, thank you so much. We had a blast, but there is still so much more that needs to be done and a lot is at risk. To Prime Minister Chris Hipkins, I thank you for your support in our work during the COVID pandemic. I appreciate that you listened to my challenges on Pacific health matters for Aotearoa and across the Pacific through the Pacific Health Corridor. And I am grateful for your support in the Pacific education space as we pushed for reform on Pacific languages, Pacific history, Pacific scholarship, and Pacific staffing. We have a saying in Samoan, from the mountains flow the blessings unto the villages. I believe that you are a mountain of a man, solid, steadfast, and immovable in your values and doing the right thing for others. You're doing a great job as Prime Minister. Thank you to Minister Winston Peters, who texts me to say he gives me his apologies. And your team and Ministers James Shaw and Marama, Marama Davidson, the Green Party. It's been a wonderful journey working with you and always appreciated your support. I'll never forget how Minister Shaw and we were so excited two weeks into being sworn as ministers. We were off to Germany to the climate change COP meetings. We both agreed to address climate change refugees. MFAT officials advised us on a humanitarian visa. And away we went using it every speech, media interview, and I was promoting it to the Pacific Island leaders. And when we returned, my political advisor asked me, did you consult Winston? Oops, I said, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you, Winston, for your understanding and support. <laughs> After meeting Pope Francis on that trip, I was able to show him that this is the hand that shook the hand of Pope Francis. And perhaps that, that may have settled his anger and may have had against me and Mr. Shaw, or maybe not. Mr. Speaker, I bet when the no tie rule was introduced, you didn't think an MP would extend it to no shirt, did you? <laughs> so that's not my intention tonight, nor is it my intention to compete in an ab competition. I'm sure that Mr. Stuart Nash will win that. <laughs> As you can see, I'm a family pack kind of guy, person. <laughs> nor is it my intention to compete with the hat of Mr. Rawiri Waititi of Te Pāti Māori, his that is a colonial construct, and my twinga is a traditional, reserved only for special occasions, made in West Auckland. <laughs> I'm in my traditional attire as a matai of my inga Samoa, reserved for special events such as tonight. The Kingitanga, the Tainui elders, plus Kote Pasifika will know better than most of the symbolism of my attire, and I invite people to make inquiries of them. I present myself this way as a sign of respect to the Pacific communities and traditional leaders who have supported me, and also to my families, the many families, Ainga Sao Pito, Ainga Sao Tiumalu, Toisu Sulu, Tafai, and Sua, all those connected to the genealogies of those families. They who have protected me, to them all I say, I'm also in my traditional attire because I want to give confidence to the people who look like me. Tall, dark and handsome. 
that they can know that they too can be standing where I'm standing and to be proud of who they are and to not be afraid to claim the right to sit at the table decision making at all levels of Aotearoa. I, I stand proudly this way to make a statement for the sake of Pacific youth of Aotearoa. I am showing them that it is okay to be different, that they can be proud of their cultural heritage even if they are just half and half or quarter like many of my nieces and nephews and my grandchildren. That is okay to be a member of the rainbow community too, and that it is okay to use pronouns, he, him, and they, them. And I want to thank my former staff, Nelly and Lou, for many lessons in that regard. <laughs> and if you are a Christian, Muslim, or whatever faith you profess it or so, okay, but allow all others to worship how, where, and what they may. Don't criticize or condemn, but try to understand. I say to all Pacific youth, it is okay to love and be proud of your point of difference. It is okay to love your cultural heritage, even if you don't speak the language. It is okay to pursue your dreams and don't ever allow your surroundings or anyone to prevent you from that pursuit. My late mother would say to me, if there is anything virtuous, lovely, of good report or praiseworthy, we should seek after these things. She also said to me, whatever thou art, act well thy part. Be proud of your cultural intelligence, your language and your community, and never leave it outside the doors of your workplace. Your language gives you direct access to thousands of years of experience and insights into how to navigate life. Take it with you wherever you go. Nurture it, study it, pursue it, be proud of it. I say again to the Pacific youth of Aotearoa, be proud of your being generations B. Brown, beautiful, brainy, bilingual, bicultural and bold. And to remember that only in Mangere, our young people are there, uh, Generation 8 Bs. Because they are just bloody brilliant. To all the candidates in this upcoming election, beware of demonizing young people. If you stick with the Ministry of Justice facts, you'll find the data shows fewer youth are offending, but the severity of the offences increase. I challenge you to see the youth of New Zealand, especially Māori and Pacific, for the potential that they can become for Aotearoa New Zealand. For all our youth, the best way of pushing back on politicians is voting on election day against those who use colonial constructs to divide and rule. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with the team at the Ministry of Justice as the first minister, Pacific Minister of Courts. We did some wonderful works in funding and supporting the work of tribunals, funding the coroner's reform, the youth courts, and the judicially led Te Ao Marama program. I thank the judiciary for their leadership in using therapeutic principles to address the challenges victims and offenders face when it comes to mental health, drug addiction, anchor management, homelessness, or fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. This is also work that must continue. I ask the Chief District Court Judge and your peers, the Principal Family Court Judge and the Principal Youth Court Judge, Ida Malosi, please do not slow down on your leadership with Te Ao Marama program. It enables access to justice for all New Zealanders and improves our justice system in the long run. Mr. Speaker, when I announced I was leaving, my wife Jean reminded me that my youngest son, Daniel, is 23 years old. He's going to be embarrassed now. And that's how long I've been playing my politics, she said. She didn't say it, but in other words, I haven't been around home that much. And she is absolutely correct. Now, I want the hindsight record to reflect that I was only able to focus all my time and energy on my role as an MP for Māngere and as Minister in the Jacinda Ardern government because my family supported me. They grounded me. <laughs> they sacrificed to allow me to take up what many would argue is the greatest calling in the world, to serve the public, to serve my community, to serve my fellow human beings, to serve Aotearoa New Zealand, to serve Māngere, to serve the Pacific, to serve the New Zealand Labour Party to the best of my abilities, and I have absolutely enjoyed and loved every minute of it. To my wife Jean and children, Lossa, Mousy, Fred, Makisha, my Moana, Joan and Daniel, and your spouse and children, thank you very much. To my children in the US, Joshua, Makisha, Senior, and Jacob, and your families, 
for a fatal lover. To my father, Opito Senior, the last of the Mohegans, the last of his generation who recently turned 85 years in Samoa. You have always been my unofficial campaign manager in South Auckland. You can now promote your many other grandkids and daughters. Thank you for your constant prayers, words of encouragement, support, and for being proud of my service. To my siblings, to Tutashi Tawa, Soloauli Pine, Suaosi Vienna, to Malu Noma, Fatunu Loli, Yvonne, and your spouses and children, including my late brother Kenneth, thank you for being honest and frank with me all the time. To all my wonderful nieces and nephews, thank you for keeping me real. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for making me feel special whilst you also made your own decisions. Like I would later find out that some of you voted for the Green Party and Māori Party. <laughs> while all the time, while all the time making me feel that you were supporting me all the way. <laughs> Good thing was I never once heard them mention the other parties. So I'm proud of you. Keep, keep it that way in this election. Remember that Labour and Chris Hipkins are in it for you. And he's the Chris with hair. <laughs> Mr Speaker, on the walls of this house are 12 carved circular rimu memorial wreaths around the balcony. Each bears a ribbon with the name of a significant engagement involving New Zealand troops in World War I. There above your seat, Mr Speaker, is the memorial wreath and ribbon for Samoa. It marks New Zealand's first World War I engagement, World War I engagement, when they sent 1,400 New Zealand soldiers to capture German Samoa at the request of Great Britain. The New Zealand Expeditionary Force Advance Party sailed from Wellington on the 15th of August and landed up here on the 29th of August, 1914. From that year onwards, New Zealand occupied Samoa and continued to administer it until Samoa won its independence in 1962. The New Zealand colonial administrators did more harm during their colonial rule from 1914 to 1962. They forced my ancestors off their lands in Satapala village to build an airport for the war. There are horrible stories of rape and pillage and killings that the late chief Tolipayali'i Toisu Sulu Sri Eva III shared with me. There was the deliberate infection of the local population when on 7 November 1918, the New Zealand military administration controlling Samoa, led by Colonel Robert Logan, made the deadly decision to knowingly allow the ship Talune, which was carrying Spanish influenza, to dock at Apia. The results were catastrophic, wiping out over a quarter of Samoa's population and decimating entire families and villages. Colonel Logan refused the offer of medical help from Tutuila, American Samoa. When the local Samoan leaders protested and revived the Mo movement, they were banished from Samoa. They were taken and imprisoned some in Mount Eden. Many were stripped of their Samoan Matai titles and moved off their land. When they were in Mount Eden, Māori visited them and gave aid. Then there was the horrific shooting by New Zealand military police on the Mau independence demonstrators in Apia, where 11 Samoans were shot to death, including the independence leader of High Chief Tupuata Masisi Le Lofi III. Saturday, 28 December 1929, became known as Black Saturday, and I have been singing wherever I have gone as a minister the song Ole Fanata Avili Wa Otea Te Mai, because that song tells of that story so that I don't forget this history. Prime Minister Helen Clark apologised in 2002 for the wrongs and harms caused during New Zealand's colonial rule. More must be done. The treaty of friendship that New Zealand holds with Samoa is the only one it has, is the document that has to be enhanced to achieve restitution for the harms caused and wrongs committed. It is not for Samoa to ask for it, it is for New Zealand to right those wrongs tangibly. This is the history that I hope will now be taught in our schools as part of New Zealand's history curriculum. 
By teaching this history, New Zealand can become a better country by understanding the mistakes they've made in the past and future generations can learn not to keep repeating the folly of past governments. Climate change still remains the single biggest security threat in the Pacific and will remain so. More must be done. We save ourselves when we save the Pacific. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, to my political scarf, Chris McAvoy, Nina uh, Sudina Price, Chris Harrington, Tasha Thomas and others, and to my Mangere electorate staff, Delilah, Ala, Makalita, Maria, Florence and the many volunteers, thank you so much for your dedication and support of me. Thank you to the Mangere Labour Party, to the jealous sisters who have travelled from afar to be here, Carol, um, thank you very much. Pacific Vice Presidents, the New Zealand Labour Council and the Auckland Northland Council, our local board members and Auckland Councils, I, there are no words to convey my gratitude to you all. I pay tribute to all the seconded staff from the Ministry for Pacific Peoples, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Health that worked in my office and all the government agency officials. We did some amazing and wonderful work that we can be very proud of. And I think and I had the best team ever as a minister. To all our health and education providers, Pacific groups and churches, my advisory groups, the Pacific Expert Advisory Group, words cannot express my heartfelt appreciation, nor can I repay your dedication. I will dance for you tonight. <laughs> to our Pacific communities of Aotearoa, to our Orometua, our religious and faith leaders, our traditional leaders, chiefs and orators, and our mamas in particular, Faftai. To all of you I say, me taki atupaka, me taki maata, me taki ranunui, me taki korereka, Faftai, Faftai te lava, Fakafetai lasi, Fekawe lahi, Maloa pito, Vinaka vakalevu. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. <laughs>